unusual to see a bush on fire in the desert, was it? In the wilderness, that happened all the time. But usually it was just like tinder. It was just on fire and then gone. This thing burns and burns and burns. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. And when the Lord saw that he'd gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing. Holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. And had we been standing there, we might have been a little afraid too. This is way out of the norm for Moses. He's never experienced anything like this before. And more is to come. Now note that it is through the burning bush that God is seeking to get Moses' attention. He has important work for Moses to do, but in order to get it done, Moses has to reconnect with the God of his father to encounter once more the God who is above all gods. Sometimes God chooses to use the unusual and the unexpected to get our attention when our focus has drifted elsewhere. Has God ever used something unusual in your life or unexpected, not always pleasant unexpected, to get your attention? And to call you back to his side? Here's what's happening in Moses' life. And then, after Moses responds and goes over to the bush, there's a significant instruction. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Now, why does God want Moses to have bare feet? To feel the sand between his toes. There is, of course, the image of respect, right? And reverence. The place where you are standing is different from other places. Why? Because God has made it so. So Moses takes off his sandals. And many religious folks in other cultures today still do that. In the tradition of those who went before them, will often walk for miles and miles to get to church, they still take off their shoes to keep from tracking dirt and dust and mud into the house of God. Just like men don't wear their hats in the sanctuary, or we seek to train our children not to run in the sanctuary. Why? Because there is something different about this place, or there should be. It is holy ground, because God has made it so And it warrants a different level of respect and honor. But I think there are other reasons why God instructs Moses to take off his sandals. I think it's also because God wants to shake Moses out of his retirement mindset and get him ready for action. And the very first thing required to do what God wants you to do is what? A spirit of obedience. Is Moses going to be obedient to God's call in his life? Well, he is in the first instruction. Take off your shoes. And that prepares him for what is to come. It seems God has big plans for Jethro's shepherd. Whether or not Moses has given much thought to them or not, God has not forgotten his people, the Hebrew nation, enslaved in Egypt and calling out to him for mercy and for deliverance. He has decided that now is the time to set them free. And Moses is just the man to go and get the job done. After all, 
He knows Egypt. He was raised there. He knows all its nooks and crannies. And he knows the land where he will need to lead the people. Indeed, it's where he is standing before the burning bush. In fact, as a sign to him, God promises that when Moses has been obedient and the people are following him, they will gather right here at this spot at Mount Horeb to worship. Moses is reluctant, remember? Very reluctant. He's not qualified. He can't talk. He can't, he's not sure he can persuade the people to believe he's ever talked to God. God does not heed all of Moses' excuses, but promises rather to be with him every step of the way. His hand mighty to save. And so Moses prepares for the journey. But here's the thing. To follow God, to do his will, to get to where he wants us to be requires that we keep careful watch. To walk along a desert path, a mountain trail, a long and winding road in sandals and shoes is one thing. Your feet are protected. But what about barefoot? Imagine how much more careful you would be watching out for things that can cut or scrape or bite jagged rocks or stickers or things that which to stub your toes. Not that God's calling Moses to walk all the way to Egypt barefoot or calling us to follow him wherever he calls us to go without shoes on our feet. The challenge, though, is to be careful how you walk, where you walk, why. You walk just like you were barefoot. Because the bottom line is this. God calls us to be holy. Why? Because he is holy. That's right. God has called us to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood. And this isn't some wooden God from Moses, from Egypt calling, mind you. This is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who redeemed us, who delivered us from slavery just as surely as he did the Hebrews in Egypt. So he wants us standing on holy ground wherever we are. That is, always aware of his presence, that he's with us wherever we go. I mean, think about it. Why do we claim those scriptures? Why do we ask him to guide our steps and guard our ways? Why do we desire that his word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path? Because we know from experience how easy it is to get lost, to get careless, and suddenly find ourselves on the wrong road, walking on hot sand in places that God never intended for us to be. More than once in my life, I've looked down at my shoes and not been so concerned about whether they were shined, but rather concerned over why they were standing where they were in places that did not honor God. Have you been to some of those places? The places where our witness is compromised? where we decide to take a break from being disciples and hope that God doesn't notice, that we don't get caught and have to suffer the consequences of our actions. But time and time again, careless walking leads to stubbed toes, doesn't it? And worse, broken hearts, broken families, lost dreams. In those times of carelessness, that little song from childhood always comes back to me. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Now, why does God want us to be so careful? Because he has great plans for us. He has places he wants us to go. 
and things he wants us to accomplish for his glory. He has Moses take off his shoes, prepare to walk carefully, because he's getting ready to send him to Egypt to do a mighty work. And the same is true for Moses' protege, Joshua, on the verge of possessing the promised land. With Jericho just down the road, Joshua encounters the commander of the Lord's army. I'm thinking it's an angel. But before Joshua can receive the plan for how to capture Jericho, he's instructed by the commander of the Lord's army to do what? Take off your shoes, Joshua. For the land where you are standing is holy. And so he did. And so the walls of Jericho fell. Why? Because Joshua was so careful to follow the instructions of the Lord to a T. He watched where he was going. How about you? How about me? My friends... One thing I want you to remember, if you remember nothing else from this morning, this is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present, and where he is, is holy This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is present, and where he is, is holy. We are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now for we are standing on holy ground. God wants us to live in a constant vigilant awareness of who he is and who we are intended to be through him. He is calling us even now here at the First Baptist Church in Jerseyville, Illinois to stand on holy ground, to behold his splendor, to bless the Lord, 10,000 reasons to do it, to follow him in his way, even to take off our shoes, even to feel the sand.